like this spot. I don't know. I just want to be like in the sun. Hi, welcome to this week's video. As you can tell by the title, today I'm going to be talking about my streams of revenue. More specifically, my 13 streams of revenue. I definitely struggled trying to figure out where I wanted to film this. I knew I wanted to be like in this spot with the rainbow. Hi Luna! But with the sun setting, I don't know how distracting the lighting is going to be, so I apologize if you don't like this. It's all experimental. Anyway, I'm gonna... It... It is rush hour though, so I will close the windows. Otherwise, we're just going to hear traffic for the whole video. I wrote out a list of all my streams of revenue on my phone, and I figured it would make a fun video just to kind of share this with you. I know that I talk a lot about monetizing what you've got. My whole motto this year and my merch this year is if you got it, monetize it, which is all about being your own boss and figuring out what you have, your talents, your passions, and learning how to monetize that and make a career out of what you can do and what you love. If you like writing, monetizing a blog. If you like talking, monetizing a podcast, and specifically specifically with, you know, my other content on my channel, figuring out how to monetize that as well. This year alone, I've definitely like doubled, tripled my revenue streams, and I thought it would make a fun video just to share that with you because I know that if you watch my videos, you probably know a handful of my streams of revenue, but you may not know all of them. And as a viewer, I really love these types of videos because they encourage and inspire me to figure out more ways that I can make money by learning how other people are doing it. I'm a firm believer of when it comes to money, having your eggs in a lot of baskets, especially this year with COVID and everyone losing their jobs and places going out of business, you really want to protect yourself. So as a social media content creator, I'm constantly looking out for my future self and paychecks and figuring out how to make a living off of social media because even if one platform does really well, like for example, YouTube, you never know if YouTube is going to be the next Vine. And think back to all those Viners that were living off of Vine and then when Vine died, it was like, what the heck do I do? So I never want to put myself in that situation where all of my eggs are in one basket and then that might not exist someday and I'm in trouble. I'm looking out for my future self, I'm being smart with my money, and I'm really just taking advantage of all the baskets that I can grab and putting my eggs in all of them. I know that's like a really weird metaphor to use here, but it makes the most sense and I think everyone is most familiar with that. About maybe, what, a year ago, I was watching Katie Bellotti's video on her streams of revenue and that really inspired me to work on mine because when she made that, I don't know if anyone watches her, but I love her content. When she made that video going over her streams of revenue, living in New York, being a content creator. She had a ton that I didn't know that she had, but also that I didn't know I could use as well. And it really inspired me to work on providing myself with more streams of revenue. So about the last six months and year of my life, I've really worked on monetizing everything that I can think of that I've got. If you got it, monetize it. I'm actually using one of my merch phone cases right now. This is the light blue example of my phone cases. If you got it, monetize it. Check it out, link down below. There's always a bar of my merch displayed at the bottom of my videos as well. This is totally how I live. You gotta monetize it. And today we're going to talk about all the things that I figured out how to monetize. I hope that this video inspires and encourages you to kind of look over what you can do and maybe increase your streams of revenue as well. It's never a bad idea. Like last year I had about two streams of revenue, YouTube and my serving job. And then when the restaurant shut down and I lost that serving job, if it wasn't for YouTube, I would be in big trouble because I would have lost all of my income and I wouldn't know what to do. It's crazy that that was last summer and now this summer I have 13 streams of revenue and I try really hard to diversify it and make sure that I'm okay if anything happens to one of them. Knock on wood because I don't want anything to happen to them at all and I'm very, very careful with that. But I have the list, like I said, on my phone. So why don't we just get on into it and I'll share with you my streams of revenue. I hope that you enjoyed. Of course, before we get started, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Comment down below if you feel comfortable. I'd love to hear maybe like a unique stream of revenue or just whatever your revenues are. I'm always so curious about that. And like I said, I love watching videos about other people's streams of revenue as well. Don't forget to subscribe. I always shut out the first comment on my social media. So be sure that you follow 
follow me on Instagram and Snapchat, Twitter, and all of that. Also, I don't think I've publicly said this in a video yet, but my Snapchat account had been hacked. If you missed all of that, it happened a few weeks ago. It's fine. I created a new Snapchat, so make sure that you re-add me or add me in my new Snapchat that I have now. McKK underscore Sam, I believe it's my new username. So double check that. Make sure that you have my new Snapchat and add me on that. Kind of sucks I have to start over with like adding people again because it's hard to like remember everyone's username and find everyone again, but I'm working on it. So definitely re-add me on Snapchat. Real quick, I just wanted to mention that this is in no way me trying to brag about anything. I just really think that these videos are fun to watch and it could be super helpful to someone that is looking to increase their revenue streams. That's literally my only purpose of making this video. I understand finances can be such a tricky subject and I typically like to keep mine super private and I was raised to not really talk about money or how much you're making, so I get it. But at the same time, I feel like this could help someone and that is literally why I'm making it. I hope it doesn't come off in any other way because that's totally not my intention at all. But that's everything. So without further ado, here are my 13 streams of revenue. Hope you enjoy. So the way that I organize this, I'm not going to say exactly how much I get for each stream of revenue, but I will do it in order of which revenues I receive the most money from to the least. So starting with my biggest paycheck to the smallest. As you probably have guessed it, my number one stream of revenue right now is OnlyFans. Who knew that's what I would be saying six months ago, but you know, OnlyFans as a whole right now is amazing from subscriptions to DMs to tips. That's kind of like how I would make my revenue off of that as like my own OnlyFans. The second stream of revenue underneath OnlyFans would be OnlyFans referrals. This is a great passive form of income for me. So if you are thinking about signing up for OnlyFans, definitely click the link in my description box. Referral links are awesome and it's crazy every single month seeing how much I'm making off of that passive income. It's like crazy cool to me, but thank you guys so much for signing up under my link. Like it really does mean the world that we can find a way to support each other like girls supporting girls heck yeah i will kind of recommend throughout this video to find ways to grow your passive income passive income if you're unfamiliar with the term is income that you receive without technically like doing active work for it if you own property and you rent out the property and the people renting pay you money that's passive income. If people use your referral link and then you get money from that, that would be passive income as well. So it's wonderful, thank you guys so much. And again, sign up for OnlyFans down below. The third stream of revenue that I have is also kind of under the OnlyFans tier here and that is through OnlyFans shoutouts. So if you do have an OnlyFans and you're hoping to grow your account, you can always purchase a shoutout from me. I post it on my OnlyFans feed, never delete it. DM me on Instagram or Twitter and we can get that set up. But that has also recently been a wonderful form of income for me as well. So thank you all so much for that. My fourth stream of revenue, you may have guessed, is YouTube, which again, such a dream come true, such a blessing. I love YouTube. I've been doing it for five years at this point and we are almost to 50,000 subscribers, which is insane. I mean, up until OnlyFans, YouTube was my number one stream of revenue and I really worked hard to be able to live off of YouTube alone. When I lost that serving job last summer, I chose not to get another job under an employer because in my head, it was that push I needed to really grow my YouTube enough to sustainably live off of that comfortably. I remember like 2018 I received my first YouTube check that was bigger than my normal employment check and that was so exciting to me because it meant that I can do this. People don't really talk about how much YouTube pays you and it used to be considered like not okay but now I think it's okay to talk about. I also want to make a full video on like how much my most viewed videos have made off of YouTube because I think that would be super cool to like see. I love watching videos like that of other people because it just depends so much on your CPM and your audience and ads. It's crazy how like much it varies even if you have the same amount of views. I mean I remember getting my first YouTube check in 2014 and it was 80 cents and it was so exciting because even though it was less than a dollar it meant a lot to me that it was like a milestone. It was my like something was working and I can't wait to work even harder and it was like getting paid to do what I love. When that happens it doesn't matter like how much you're getting paid because you're still being recognized. I don't know if that makes any sense but yeah it was never like oh I can't believe I only made 80 cents. It was always like wow this is so cool I'm making money from doing what I love. So it's been really awesome to see that grow and accumulate to a point where I can very comfortably live off of my YouTube and it's just a dream come true. So thank you guys so much for helping make that happen. And more specifically what I mean by this stream of revenue is the YouTube app. 
ads. So what Google pays me for YouTube from CPM, clicks, advertisements on my videos. But my next stream of revenue, number five, is YouTube brand deals, YouTube sponsorships, like stuff like that for my videos where the company will pay me money to post. So any video that is sponsored by a company, I legally and always will tell you that this video is sponsored. Wow, what a great segue for if this video was sponsored. I should have planned that a lot better. <laughs> probably could have made it happen. But in that case, then a company would pay me on top of my Google AdSense revenue, a certain fee that we've agreed upon before the video goes up. So if I ever have a brand deal or a sponsorship, then that is another form of income for me as well. So number six on my list is actually something that I recently discovered back in March, actually thanks to my mother. I think we were out shopping and she asked if I did this certain affiliates program. And I was like, no, I've looked into it, but I haven't really figured it out yet. Don't think it will make a big difference. But my mom actually really pushed me to start Start this so I took her advice and I included this type of affiliates program into one of my videos and I actually made $200 that first month off of it so thank you mom but this next stream of revenue is actually Amazon affiliates I know that a lot of influencers are using this and I think that's why my mom suggested it to me I first tried this out in my office room makeover like 24 hour challenge office room makeover video where I included the links of everything I got off of Amazon in the description and then if anybody clicks on that link if anybody purchases the same item from using your link you get a percentage of that payment which is really cool I feel like I got really really lucky because during quarantine I made an Amazon favorites video I honestly did not expect it to do as well as it did keep in mind my channel it's still pretty small and I don't expect my videos to like blow up sometimes the way that they do. So when they do, I'm like really shocked. But my Amazon favorites video did so well that all the affiliate links in that video paid my rent that month and more, which is insane. So Amazon affiliates is totally worth it. Even if you're a small channel, even if you just have like a following on Instagram or something else, it doesn't hurt to use an affiliate link because even if it seems small, more than one person might use it and it will grow over time. So it's been super awesome that since March, Amazon has been a pretty consistent stream of revenue for me as well. And in a way, I think that would be considered passive income, which is awesome. The next thing on my list, I don't think anybody really knows, but my seventh stream of revenue is actually a company that I work with underneath my mom. So it's not my mom's company, but she is considered my boss and this is really complicated unless you know something else in my life, which I keep pretty private from the internet. I did mention it in my um, quarantine vlog back when that first happened in March. I mentioned how one of my siblings is like super sick, the type where we have nurses at my parents' place to help take care of them because it's really crucial. But because of that, I can be employed underneath my mother to help out and I do work for her sometimes, but she's underneath like a different company that helps with my sister. So it's vague because I'm like leaving a lot out on the internet but it's also a stream of revenue. I haven't really needed to use it often this year, but like when I lost my job last summer when the restaurant shut down, I started working underneath my mom like a lot more to make up for it. So it is helpful and here and there, like I'll get hours, you know, depending on what she needs me to do to help out, which is really great. And I still really appreciate that. So that is super awesome. So the next two things on my stream of revenue for number eight and number nine are my merch store. So uh, definitely check out my merch, like I mentioned. And this is a more recent stream of revenue as well because I didn't release merch until February of 2020. And that would be my podcast merch breaking up which also ties into like my next stream of revenue. But then I also released my OnlyFans inspired if you got it monetized line of merch, which is where this phone case came from. And that has been doing really awesome. So thank you guys so much. Definitely check it out if you're curious. And like I mentioned, my podcast, that is my next stream of revenue. So I earn revenue off of my podcast. You have a CPM similar to how YouTube is set up. It's been really cool. I released my podcast on Valentine's Day this year because it is a dating podcast called Breaking Up with Michaela Smuntry. I just realized you can kind of see my pile of clothes behind me, so. Oops, whatever. I meant to pick that up before I filmed, but completely forgot. Yeah, anyway, I just released my podcast in February. It's been going really, really great. I'm having a ton of fun. It's such a fun platform for me to just be able to spill my guts for an hour a week and not really filter or edit it and then post it. It just feels really laid back and unfiltered. So highly recommend checking out my podcast. The way I get paid to have my podcast is both by the podcast itself because it has CPMs, cost per mile, or like listens per thousands, I guess. So I get a certain amount per thousand listeners similar to how YouTube is set up with how you get a certain amount per like thousand views 
or clicks. And then I also have listener support set up too, which is kind of like a monthly subscription that you can sign up to help support my podcast. Some people have it set to like $5, some people have it set to a dollar, three bucks, seven bucks, totally varies. But this way it helps you kind of show your support to me as like the artist on the platform. I don't know why this is in quotes. It just feels weird calling me the artist. Similar to like current radio, or I don't know if that's like a Midwest or Minnesotan thing, public radio, I should say. It's set up in the same way where if you want to support something that kind of has like no ads, donate but show your support the way that you can. I hope that makes sense. But yeah, so those are the two ways that I get paid through my podcast. And it's again, super awesome. And I am so happy that people are supporting me for doing what I love. And it means the world that you guys like my podcast. It's such a blind platform in a way because I can't really see or engage with who is listening. But whenever I do get messages about it, it just warms my heart because it's easy to sometimes feel like you're just talking into this great abyss without realizing that there's somebody listening. So thank you so much. So the 10th thing on my list of revenue streams, I'm actually not really doing anymore since quarantine, but then also this whole year, like everything that's happened with OnlyFans and just being so much more stable, I'm not really doing this as much, but back when I needed to, I would, and that is babysitting. I love kids, I love nannying, I love babysitting. I've been doing it since basically parents would let me, like age 12, I think was the first time someone like trusted me with their kid. So I've been babysitting like more than half of my life. It's always been to me like a dream job as a teenager because I was getting paid to just do what I love. Again, hang out with kids, watch kids movies, go to the park. Like it was great. There are families that I've been watching their kids for for over like 10, 12 years at this point, watching the kids go from like a crib in diapers to entering middle school or even high school. So it's been absolutely insane to see these kids grow up and feel so connected and close to these families. I just like hit a point these last few months, turning 25, becoming very financially stable, quarantine, where I realized I don't really want to anymore and that's why I haven't really been babysitting and obviously like six months ago and a year ago I really really needed the help financially so I would say yes to every single babysitting job but at this point I feel like a teenager could benefit from the $15 an hour I was getting babysitting more than like I can now so I'm kind of going through this transition of no longer accepting babysitting jobs I think there are like one or two families that I will continue to do it for just because I'm so attached to them and their kids and I do love them but other than that I think I'm just going to scratch this off the list of revenue streams very soon because I'm outgrowing it, which is totally okay. So the next two things on my list, which is actually like crazy and so cool, is um, the stock market. Oh my God, the sun. I feel like there's a spotlight on me. The stock market. I don't know if I want to see what that was. I really don't. I'm not gonna do it. Like I said, the stock market, more specifically dividends and interest. So if you are unfamiliar with how stocks work, some of the stocks that you buy in the stock market come with dividends, which means that they will pay you a percent every single month quarter or yearly it just kind of depends on the certain share that you bought in that company but this is another great form of passive income so right now i have an individual account as well as a roth ira account for my retirement because i'm self-employed i have to have like my own versus like a 401k which is like completely fine the best thing that we have right now especially like me being as young as i am is time so i wanted to start investing as soon as i could because i do have a lot of years ahead of me fingers crossed, that I can really multiply my money through compound interest. I'm going to actually make a full video on investing, so definitely subscribe because that one will be up next. What's really awesome about some stocks is that depending on what you buy, some companies will give you a percentage back that you can either put back into the shares, which essentially becomes compound interest, you know, money making money. Over time, it will become like this infinite link of just money becoming money becoming money because they're giving you money that you're giving back to make more money and then your interest gets bigger. Kind of complicated, but really simple when you break it down. An example of this would be like, I have shares in both Pepsi and Coca-Cola because I think these are great companies to invest in. I don't see them going anywhere. They're available at almost every single store and restaurant. You can buy them to have in your home. You can go out to eat and a lot of people not gonna lie are basically like addicted to sodas so i don't really see this product like going under anytime soon but what's awesome about being a shareholder with pepsi or coca-cola is that every time somebody buys one you get like 0.0001 or something crazy like that of their purchase if i'm out to eat and i see somebody get a coke that's wonderful because it means that i'm going to get a percentage of that 
when Coca-Cola distributes their dividends for that quarter or that month. I kind of forget what they do. I think it's quarter, to be honest, or months. I can't remember. What's even crazier is that there are people out there that have invested so much that they can live off of the dividends that they receive. It blows my mind. I'm definitely not there yet, but it does help. And I'm not spending that money that I'm getting back whenever I receive that interest. I'm actually keeping it in my account to buy more shares with. And like I said, kind of use the money to make more money, to make money, put it back in to make more money. It's a cool cycle. But yeah, I'll definitely have a full video all about that because I know that I've received a few questions about investing and I know that I definitely had a ton before I started. So be on the lookout for that. But if you do wanna sign up for Robinhood, I will leave that in the description bar down below. If you sign up, you and I both get a free stock. You don't have to buy anything. You just have to set up your account, connect your bank account and all of that. And then you and I will both receive a free stock that you could either keep and grow that interest or sell and use that money to buy a new stock. Pretty cool. But I'll leave that down below if you are curious and to get that journey started. So I have my dividends as passive income listed for two streams of revenue because I have an individual account, like I've mentioned with Robinhood. And then I also have my Roth IRA, which is my retirement account with an actual bank. I receive dividends for both of these. So the last thing on my list of revenue streams is also something that I actually haven't done in about six months. And that's why it's at the bottom of this list. I think it will always be an option, but I really don't feel the need to anymore. And that is door dashing. So if you've been on this channel a while, you may remember remember that last summer I did a I tried door dashing for a week and this is how much money I've made type of video and I've made I think it was like $580 that week which is pretty good for one week of door dashing when you think about it that's like $2,000 a month off of DoorDash. last summer when I lost my serving job and I was really struggling to make money I was trying to think of all these different ways that I could start to make money and DoorDash was one of those things that really helped it's actually really awesome because you can come up with your own hours and just do it whenever you feel like it you can stop at any time you don't have to go to work for like a certain set amount of time you could literally just like DoorDash one or two orders and then be done if you wanted to be it was really great money sometimes it averaged to be about $20 an hour which is awesome when you write this off for taxes you can always write off the miles that you drove the gas that you spent and all of that which can help a ton so that you don't end up paying more taxes when you file yeah like I said I just really haven't felt the need to have to do that but I know it's always an option which is why it's at the bottom of my list it's not like an active stream of revenue right now but it is something that I would consider to be a revenue stream for myself but yeah that's that's everything I had on my list of revenue streams. I hope that you enjoyed. I hope this was kind of like fun to get a glimpse into. I know that I've gotten a lot more interested in financial content on the internet this year, specifically with just everything that's been going on in the world. You never know what could happen. You never know how financially secure you could be if you lose your job, if we go into quarantine. Like it's crazy what a pandemic can like open your eyes to. All that talking for the last half hour made me so thirsty. Check out my water bottle. <laughs> I'm supposed to drink this whole thing in a day and it's like 4 p.m. and I'm only up here. I can usually do it because I go to bed so late. I'm gonna link this down below if you want my water bottle. I love it so much. It's a gallon of water, it helps me hydrate throughout the day. Definitely go check it out, link down below, Amazon affiliate link, no shame. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed. Definitely stay tuned for next week's video. It's gonna be a vlog, so it's gonna be like a ton of content, but I will go deeper into investments and talk more about that for beginners, my tips and tricks, and everything you really need to know about investing. Don't forget to check out my merch as well, but I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you guys next week with my new video. Bye. I was so hurt and upset that I never gave him another chance. I'm still recording.